Now get ready, we're gonna be getting nerdy about the Ferrari, Red Bull and Mercedes floors to see how they're starting to get a handle on the bouncing. So in Imola, we got a look at the Red Bull and Mercedes floors in the garage and Sainz gave us a look under the Ferrari after his spin in qualifying. And there were some really interesting bits to break down, especially on the Red Bull. If you look closely, these metal bits on the floor are called skids and they could be the answer to the bouncing on the straights. So let's get into it. Now there are many things that are kicking off the porpoising, but there is one main one that the teams are focusing on and it's the flexing of the floor cars are struggling to get down to the weight limit and so if you make the floor as light and therefore as thin as possible this helps. That means that the floors are flexing quite a lot as the downforce builds and that can be a good thing meaning you can control the airflow a little bit better and constricting the airflow can often be a good thing as well and this is because if the gap between the track and the floor is smaller you can accelerate the air more and therefore generate more downforce but if the floor hits the ground you stop that airflow and you get rid of the downforce and that's a big issue. Because if you stop the airflow going where you want to seal the diffuser from the rear tire wake, then what will happen is as you get down, right down to the floor with that uh, floor, quite literally, um, the tire wake will start going in the diffuser. And what that will do is will ruin your rear downforce, which then, kicks off the potential kicks off one of the ways is porpoising. So we want flex in the floor, but not so much that it touches the ground. So how have the teams done this? So this is where the teams are coming up with these really quite clever solutions. First one are the skids. Essentially these are little metal, often titanium components that are made to skid along the track, allowing the floor to flex, but only up to a point. So you always have the space for the airflow and therefore downforce is consistent and hopefully that leads to less bouncing. Now Ferrari have done this with some metal components lining the edge of the floor. These allow for the floor to skid across the track and keeping it from riding too low, essentially using the curved shape of the edge of the floor to keep the floor up. And this works, but only up to a point. It seems that the teams aren't fully sure on how the floors are flexing under the aero load, as many are running laser ride height sensors all over the rear of the floor to get as much data as they can about what flex is causing the porpoising and what isn't. But Red Bull have come up with a solution that means they don't have to worry about this, the coolest one by quite a long way. They have this angled skate under the floor and it was spotted in Imola. And it does exactly the same job as the other skids, but this is on the underside of the floor and that is particularly important. It's an area that is crucial to downforce production and that is really sensitive to the quality of airflow it receives. And you've got the diffuser right there that is pulling the air all the way under the floor. And if you disturb that airflow, it has huge ramifications for the entire underfloor. Then you consider this right next to the tire squirt from the rear tires, and you can see why the teams focus on this so much. This incidentally is what all of these floor cutouts are for, the holes and flicks all along the rear sort of third of the floor. They're all there to try and get some airflow into this space and energize the flow between the tires and the diffuser. And it's just at this transition, as we were speaking about, where you have air trying to come out from under the floor at the front, sort of two thirds, and there you want air to go back under the floor in that last kind of third of the floor. Now, this is that critical area between these two airflows. And again, something that we believe is one of the key reasons for some of the porpoising on some of the cars. If you can stop that floor getting right down to the uh, track, then you potentially could prevent porpoising. You then separate the two and keep the diffuser producing loads of downforce. Red Bull are also using this skid as a sort of strake to direct the flow here. So not only is it supporting the floor at just the right ride height, not to mention that you could tune it for different circuits, but it can also be directing the flow exactly where they want it, right between the rear tires and the diffuser, which is really clever. But I'm sure you're all thinking what I am right now. How are these legal? And yes, they do have holes in, but they kind of seem like a sort of skirt and skirts are banned. They're a device designed to bridge the gap between the bodywork and the ground, which is something that's not allowed in the regulation. But clearly Red Bull have found a definition of the regs that allow them to do this. It seems Red Bull have come up with a solution that is legal, most likely why there are so many holes in it and why it's really small. Not to say that other teams haven't come up with solutions for this. You can see floor stays on a lot of the cars and these support the floor from the rear suspension area. Won't allow the same sort of ride height control that the skids will. The stays may flex and they can move with the suspension of the car, whereas the skates are a hard stop. And while Ferrari were doing tire testing for the 2023 Pirellis, we saw that they did their usual floor testing 
um, throughout most of it, but then they changed the floor. And where you have a winglet on the edge of the floor, that was removed. And we've seen this version of the floor run previously, but by looking underneath that area, you can see some silver metal, which looks like Ferrari have also adopted the skate. Ferrari look like they're adopting the solution. And I bet a lot more of the teams will too, but that's all if it remains legal. You should check out this video about where McLaren's amazing pace came from in Imola. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.